Oh man. Joel? Yes. I see you. I see Tony. I see Joel. I see myself. We have a sleeping red band in the back right now. And we're back doing another episode of Jeremiah Wonders Roadcast. Tony, how you doing, man? I'm good. Pretty hungover. And, uh, you know, another day at the office. Here we are. Giving away uh, exclusive backstage, behind the scenes, Kill Tony content. Straight into Jeremiah's podcast. Just giving it away like a f- good friend. Exclusive Kill. It's basically the Kill Tony show, but we're just giving it to you. The Kill Tony behind the scenes show. But it's just uh, yet another gift that I'm giving to you. Wow. Let's do it, shall we? That's a great positive way. To start the the episode because into me, it. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm a little bit bitter about the last episode. I'm not going to lie. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, you Whoa, this just in. Uh, okay, Tony's bitter about the last episode. Let's get into it. Want to know why? Yeah. I have I'll a feeling. Why. Yeah, I'm gonna sure. Tell, I'm going to get right into he it. He can't wait. Okay. I did a little research since the last roadcast. Okay. Because everybody wanted to make <laughs> jokes. All right. And then you want to know what I typed in to Google? I typed in map of where bisons exist in the United States of America. So you did some research. Yeah. Yeah, I did because I was thinking to myself, how could I see a bison? And then you guys kept making jokes after that. Like the second time I thought I saw a bison, it it was a cow. And you guys are like, (laughs) what? That's not a... That's not a bison. That's a cow, you idiot. Right? And then everybody <laughs> wanted to make jokes again and again. Hey, is that a bison? Oh, is that a bison? Oh, it's a telephone pole, but is that a bison? <laughs> and so I looked up. I looked up. Where do bisons exist? And guess what? There's really only basically really one spot <laughs> in all of America where bisons, a.k.a. the American buffalo, <laughs> Exists. If he dropped the scientific name right now, he's like, "Yes, Buffalo Sentatus." Because <laughs> you've researched so much. I have, and it just so happens to be, and you, you guys might have trouble digesting this fucking information because it's a fact, and I know you guys like to play around in Wonderland over there, right? But it just so happens to be that we were on a drive from Salt Lake City to Boise, Idaho, right? And guess where bisons exist? And let me (laughs) remind you, before I even say, which you already know the answer, but let me remind you, I'm from Ohio, where cows are everywhere, all right? And that's just the women. No, I'm kidding. But no, there's cows (laughs) everywhere, okay? I know what a fucking cow looks like, all right? I'm not from Wisdell's, Wisconsin, okay? I know what cows look like. With stills, just okay. Yes. Wow. All right. Bisons only exist in America between, get ready for your mind to be blown, Salt Lake City and Boise, Idaho. Smack dab right in the middle. Okay. And a little bit north of there as well in the Yellowstone area. But literally, I looked at a map. I matched it up. I looked at the <laughs> freeway that we were on, and there's bison along that freeway. <laughs> Sounds like a bison serial killer with the red string and you're tracing it <laughs> around the area on the map. I have index cards all over my okay. walls right now. So you have a lot of knowledge. I, want, I, want, I would like to maybe just play a sound of, a, of an animal. You tell me of whether <laughs> where that sound comes. It's a cow. I'll already I'll guess right now it's a cow. <laughs> that was <laughs> That was Brian's butt. Did Brian really just start? Brian perfectly (laughs) (laughs) died. Brian! Oh my god. I did not did perfectly time before. That was when Joel said, You tell me this. 
<laughs> Johnny, you didn't see. Red Man popped up his hoodie, smiled, and then went back to it, sleep. I think he also tilted his cheek like my way. Oh, dude, I'm crying. Oh. Red Man just completely laid me out. Oh, my goodness. Mm, wow, what a smart sense of humor you have, <laughs> Jeremiah. Dude, smarter than thinking. <laughs> Funny's funny, dude. A cow is a bison. <laughs> Dude, you going off the rails at the top of the podcast is going to make it so much worse than that. Like, and another thing. Do you think I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here? Have you ever seen me on movie fights? I know how to work the crowd. Actually, Dude, so we, no. We had somebody come up uh, to us. Uh, this is net, literally the first time this happened. They were like, hey, I saw you guys on uh, Screen Junkies movie fights. And Tony's like, uh, what is that? <laughs> and uh, he's like, you were on this uh, this show. And uh, we were on this sh- uh, show, if you if you YouTube it. Uh, the guy's like, yeah, I actually really liked you guys on there. But uh, the thumbs downs, uh, it's, it's kind of out of control. It's one of the worst rated episodes in the history of the show. So we go on uh, today. Red Band looked earlier. And there are twice as many... Th- thumbs down as there are thumbs up on this episode all because one of the reasons was tony uh it's a movie fight show like debating movies and tony said that he didn't he's never seen citizen kane <laughs> that's right you fucking nerds and i'm proud of it i'm never gonna watch it and i still understand movies and i'm in the writers guild you fucking dumbass <laughs> red man is vaping in his sleep back there right now <laughs> <laughs> Weekend at Banny's back there. Oh my goodness. It's just like on auto. Oh, dude. Well, it's been a crazy run. Yeah. We are in, um, right now we're in, uh, headed to Minneapolis, the final stop on this leg of the tour. But, uh, we were. <sighs> Where did we start this week? Appleton. Appleton. And then we went on to Milwaukee. Yes. And then we went to Chicago. Chicago. And had a day off. Had a day off. And then we went to uh, Madison. Madison. And now we're headed to Minneapolis. Ooh, I can't believe I remember those. It feels like it's so long ago. Yeah. A little bit. We all uh, collectively were... Uh, not the biggest fans of uh, Milwaukee um, in general. Do you have anything to say about that, Tony? Yeah, uh, I'm never going back there again. <laughs> Everything sucked, and uh, people are literally like, it's like people are all just like, it almost reminds me of like a soup kitchen. <laughs> Like, it's like, uh, you're like, hey, can I have something with a little flavor to drink? And they're like, no, dude, it's a soup kitchen. It's just water here. And that's what the people are. They're just water. There's no, like, oh, can I put, can I, like, mix something into this water? Like, no. No. Just plain water. No personality. (laughs) No fun. Everything sucked. Especially the hotel. Shout out to the Astor Hotel, A-S-T-O-R, in Milwaukee for being the worst hotel I've ever stayed at in America. Wor- worst customer service I've ever received, ever. God, I, I, <laughs> I, I called when we were, it was raining real hard outside. There's no parking in this lot at this hotel. And uh, I called the, uh, the front desk to be like, uh, Hey, um, you know, the parking lot's full. Uh, what do you suggest uh, we do? We park because we're, you know, we're paying for parking. And uh, the guy goes, I'm not going to stay on the phone with you while you figure this out. So I was nothing but polite on the phone. So we get inside. <laughs> and Tony and I are so upset because then Tony is trying to be nice. He's like, hey, uh, we parked. Uh, it's not a designated spot, but we're not blocking anybody. Uh, would you mind uh, leaving this note for whoever's working tomorrow, yeah, yeah, go, the make and model of the go. car? Yeah, you go, can you make a note for whoever's working the morning shift just so that nobody complains and we don't get towed or anything because we're staying at the hotel? He goes, make a note. What am I, your secretary? That's what he says. That's what 
he said to me. I go, what? What? Huh? I go, no, you're not my secretary. You're a fucking hotel desk clerk. You fucking dork. I'm one of the top young writers. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> you didn't say that. But you did look at him in the eyes. I've never seen you do this before. You looked him right in the eyes, made eye contact with him. And? And I told him, you suck. I go, this guy gets it because the security guy's like, oh, man, I'll move my car for you. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's taking care of somebody. That's how you do it. That's customer service. You, sir, <laughs> you suck. Vince McMahon style. You're fired. It, it, it was, uh, it was, it was definitely needed in that situation. And I, uh, I'm usually not that, uh, that, that person, but that guy was uh, next level bad. Yeah. I'm always extremely nice. Tell these people how, how nice of a guy I am. It's true. Unless your name is Bernard, Tony is <laughs> very nice. He was the first guy earlier in the day who also we had an issue with. Oh, yeah. You, you mean the guy that you had to basically pull me off? I had to pull Tony. I had to be like, okay, Tony, we'll, we'll figure this out. Joel and, I, Joel and I will get a rollout it bed. Was, it was so bad. I was so mad at the daytime guy at that hotel that basically I almost fought Jeremiah. <laughs> like the whole thing turned. It was one of those things where like, he got in the middle of a fight and then that guy's in a fight all of a sudden. Yeah. You're like, Tony, relax. Everything's going to be fine. I'm like, uh, what? Yeah. I'm not, like, don't Tony me. I'm not done with this. He goes, now I'm fucking arguing with you. Uh, yeah, I was mad, dude. Meanwhile, Joel leaves our takeout downstairs because he's so, like, not knowing what to do. I was just sitting. Do. You guys were in front of it. I went back. I grabbed it later. We had some I, delicious late night ribs. I go, Joel, where are, are the ribs? And he goes, oh, no, I think... I must I have left him. He goes, he goes, I think in the in the rigmarole of everything. He didn't say rigmarole. I could have though. But, but he could have though. But he's like, but he's like, I I think I left the ribs in the lobby. I go, dude, you you're gonna have to go get those ribs because we're gonna need them. And then Joel and I had a bender later oh. that night of cold ribs, gardettos, uh cinnamon roll. Cinnamon rolls, uh a sticky bun, and uh famous, famous, famous Amos chocolate chip cookies. Uh, that's how Joel and I get wasted yeah. together. That's right. Dude, we let, we had rib towels on our legs on the bed, and that's how you know you hit rock bottom when you got rib towels on the bed over your legs, over your white gam. Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about, Tony? I tugged on this mic a little bit. Is it still good? It's still registering? Yep. Okay, cool. Just checking. <laughs> Another thing that I do on the, on the road is calm down Joel constantly. <laughs> like just now. Like he had a bump in the mic, yeah. and and he'll uh, he'll like double check in with me. Like, yeah. are we still, are we still good here? And I'm like, yeah, yeah I don't buddy. even realize it. I'm like, yeah, anymore. buddy, we're freaking, Hell yeah, freaking good. Dude. I've been good though. Last two tours, panic free, up. baby. Panic free, and also I've been training Joel to. Uh, we pack the night before that way we're not stressing the morning of. And then also no last minute showers right before we go. We shower the night before or not at all. And we wait till the next destination. That helps a lot with the fluidity in the mornings. Or you guys can just be adults and set an alarm and get up with the alarm and then you could do everything. Do you know who the fuck you're talking to? Bernard? Shower. I shower every single morning and I'm still the first one to the car almost every single Time. You're sounding like a real Bernard right now, yeah, dude. dude. <laughs> wow. One thing that, uh, uh, Joel, I wish you would have actually uh, gotten to come um, to my mom's house in, uh, oh, yeah, in Kansas because that was actually, uh, uh, it was cool to get to, to show Tony around. I was trying to get Red Band to come over. He ended up, he was sleepy and uh, he went back to his hotel, but he got some good food. Is that out where of your it. dog lives? That's where, yeah, that's where Foot Long lives, my wiener yeah. dog. Yeah. What, uh, what did you guys eat? Did your mom cook a bunch of stuff? Or? Yeah. She yeah. Made, uh, chicken uh, enchiladas. Dang. And um, we had we had it. It was delicious. What was that salsa that was we had? She has a uh, picante sauce. She has a white uh, homemade cheese dip that she makes uh, oh, with wow. jalapenos and spinach and black olives, and oh, it's yeah, really good. Like, 
It looked like like a spinach artichoke dip, but it was uh, just queso with oh. spinach mixed in for like texture and color. It's cool. It's great. Sounds great. Yeah, so we had that. We had uh, uh, so we had uh, basically a Mexican lunch, and then we went to go do the show in Lawrence, and uh, it was the sh- the show was kind of a bittersweet uh thing for me because what was special to me about that show the granada and lawrence that's the first uh concert venue that i ever went to to see a show i saw spoon there i think in 2008 who'd you Uh, see spoon okay the band yeah 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 Yeah. uh and i went with my sister and it was an amazing time we got t-shirts after the show like did all the you know all the the checklist stuff i was i was the cool older brother who got us tickets through the radio station that i was working for and it was great. So it was a very surreal full circle moment for me to come back there, you know, 10 years or so later and perform on that stage where I saw that band. And it was it was really cool. It was a fun show that we did. Uh, but every time the lights went up on the crowd, uh, I could see my dad with his arms crossed and scowling at the stage. So it was like... <laughs> <laughs> it was literally every any time the lights and for whatever reason the light guy was like very hands on that night of oh, of doing like the 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 stadium lighting thing where it like shines on the audience like after a, a punchline literally any time. So I saw my dad for about two hours, uh, just um, uh, not happy. Your dad told the lighting guy, he's like, "I want my son to know I'm here and I disapprove." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. But uh, my brother and his wife and and uh, they they really enjoyed the show. So it's just a different different taste of uh, of comedy. Yeah. Your brother loved the show, man. He was asking a bunch of good questions afterwards. He actually had, I think I remember like he had a couple like good ideas and really interesting, uh, really interesting um, questions, especially like, I mean, or like Kansas, you know what I mean? Like, I just wasn't expecting. And I guess because it's like your brother and it's more of just like a normal common thing. But your brothers, you guys have some like, it's clearly like funny. Like, there's you have some funny stuff in your like jeans or whatever. Because he was pretty funny, man. <laughs> the only he, thing funny in Jeremiah's jeans are his tidy whities <laughs> Oh, all right, let's talk about my tidy whities that that I wore. We mean not tight at all. <laughs> Loosey goosey. Yeah, dude, you got fucking flop, flop of the loom. Okay, Lucy Deucey's. Let's talk about my stretched out underwear that you saw me wear. Maybe I'll include a freaking picture. Yeah, I, maybe yeah, it'll break the episode. I don't know. Do it. Maybe I should because we, you know, we gave you so much crap about the bison. Maybe this is karma. Maybe I'm supposed to share this photo that Joel took of me mid-change in the dressing room in Appleton, Wisconsin. Yeah. You look like you had a goddamn bison in your under roots. <laughs> oh, wow. An indoor water park. You guys said that, uh, that uh, uh, is that Great Wolf Lodge? No. Uh, it's a huge water slide. In uh, there, there's one in Kansas City that, that is, uh, what's that name of that called? There's a Ferris wheel inside on that other. That's so crazy to me. Weird. Being from California. And there's an AMC movie theater right there. Oh, wait, it is Great Wolf Lodge. Wow, they have one oh, here cool. too. That's so cool. Yeah, they got an indoor water park there as well. Whoa, competing ones back to back here and uh, yeah, on the way smart, to Wisconsin. White trash Disney. Anyway. So, uh... The reason why I had these loose underwear, okay, uh, because Joel, <laughs> basically when I was changing, I had these whitey tighties on, or as they call them loosey doosies. Uh, <laughs> Joel's like, what are those? And I'm like, oh, well, I was getting into character. I wore them for Baloney Pete <laughs> the other night. Because so, uh, if you know, if Joel knows anything about me, I, I sometimes go pretty deep. <laughs> into some of these characters it's terrifying like into, into the prep uh or even i stay in the character long after the show like in uh, madison last night i uh we debuted some new uh wildlife expert characters and i stayed as uh this character tibby for the entire meet and greet and for a couple hours afterwards and uh most people seem to enjoy it red band 
Tibby, yeah. Oh, I called you Jimmy Nolan the entire episode. Well, his uh, his name's James Nolan. That's why where you got it. Oh. His name's James Nolan, but you can call him Tibby. Oh, I thought you said you can call me Jimmy. I called you Jimmy the whole episode. That's all right. It's Tibby. Anyway, uh, anyway, uh, so sometimes I stay deep in the characters, and uh, I did uh, this thing where to get into the the mindset of Baloney Pete, uh, I. I made uh, bologna sandwiches for the show, and uh, I wore these white BVD, like, whitey tidy underwears. Uh, but our bags got delayed the next day, so we had to take our luggage right to the venue, so I didn't have time to change my underwear. So I had <laughs> those whitey tidies on for a period of at least 36 hours. So by the time I was changing, oh my God. they were all loose and baggy in the butt area. And they, they were, were just well like, done, they're dude. just swampy. So the, the, the guys were joking, saying that if you look closely in the picture, it looks like the Monopoly man is in <laughs> like, a, like a Mexican Virgin Mary sighting. It's like a white people's <laughs> Monopoly guy. They start seeing it in different things and stuff like that. So that's my explanation on that. Taco John, actually. It could be Taco John. Uh, are you, uh, Taco John, I introduced Tony and Redman to it, and they said that it's one of their new favorite Mexican restaurants I think in the United cool. States. I can't believe you did that to us. And that is that goes as a, oh, a permanent that goes as a permanent strike on your record, just to let you know. Now you're you've been docked uh, on food decisions for you're on probation for at least a couple months. You don't get to decide where we eat for two months because of that. So, oh, come on, Tony. I hope it was worth it. You're going to learn. He lied to us. <laughs> he lied to us. We could have eaten lunch anywhere. When you're doing the road, it's important, unless you're literally a fucking human garbage disposal system, to not eat dog shit because you can feel it. You can feel it during the show. You can feel it at night. You can feel it the next morning. If you have one truly dirty, shitty meal, you can feel it. And uh, and he told us that Taco John's was like a luxurious Taco Bell. Right? Like, <laughs> luxurious? I said upscale Taco Bell. Uh, <laughs> well, it, it, <laughs> it's laughing in his sleep. <laughs> well, it's not a luxurious Taco Bell. It was definitely. <laughs> it's a velvety Taco it was, Bell. It was, Dude, they have red ropes. They like unhook them. They're like, right this way. Are you one of the top young rising comedians in the world? Then you're going to want to get the number one. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it was at a truck stop. It was <laughs> in the truck stop. <laughs> and it was definitely just a lower level Del Taco. Not only was it not a luxurious Taco Bell, it wasn't even Del Taco, which is below Taco Bell. Well, does Del Taco have fresh cut jalapenos and a salsa bar? I don't think so. You keep going back to these jalapenos. Jeremiah. 7-Eleven has the same <laughs> fresh cut jalapeno. Those aren't fresh cut. Do they have a fresh salsa bar like Taco John's, though? Yes. Yes, they have salsa at 7-Eleven. If they have, if they have the fucking, what are those? Nachos? Jill, what are the, uh, what's the things that roll on the taquitos? Oh, Redman <laughs> just in his sleep said taquitos. <laughs> Redman is our uh, senior uh, unhealthy food correspondent here on the show. Dude, you taquitos know Taquitos was the answer. And yes, they have dog shit salsa, just like Taco John's. I've been craving a spicy bite from 7-Eleven for the last few months. I haven't taken the plunge. I haven't been that sad, but I've been wanting one. You I've ever had in, one of those? I've been in the mood for a bison burger lately. Oh, shit. Oh, I got your patty right yummy, here. dude. Yeah, a cow burger. Come on. <laughs> dude, we had a pretty epic night off in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, it's where I'm, uh, I'm why I'm wearing this uh, Chicago White Sox hat. Tony got us uh, all White Sox hats for the night. Got us the hookup on amazing seats behind home plate, which are probably the best seats I've ever had at a baseball Me stadium experience. Uh, yes, they were. They are the best seats you've ever had. And you're damn right. 
I did that for us. Anyway, go ahead. So we admit, admit that it was a bison. Admit it right now. So Tony found us these hats, these new era hats. We thought he was, you know, we thought he was just gonna buy us some like cheap ten dollar ones. He bought us official MLB licensed hats. I mean, hold on a second. Let me let, let me just be honest here. I was going to get you. Oh, the I know. Cheapest hats available. <laughs> I know. But they were they're smart. They have you know signs that say thirty dollar hats and fifteen dollar hats or whatever. And I saw fifteen dollar hats. I'm like, okay, I could fucking. You know what I mean? I can rationalize that. They were green White Sox yeah. hats. Who the fuck wants a green White Sox hat? She goes, are you Irish? And we're like, well, that has nothing to do whether we want the green one or not. Right. It's not even the colors of the team. So anyway, I ended up getting the good ones because I'm a great guy. Uh, it's true. So uh, <laughs> this just confirmed Tony Hinchcliffe, good, solid guy. So before that, uh, before we get to the game, which is also great. We met up with uh, Dan Soder and Christina Hutchinson uh, at Lou Malnati's, which is my favorite spot and I think Tony's favorite spot for deep dish uh, Dude, pizza in Chicago. Introduced Joel to it. And Joel, what was your consensus after uh, having that Chicago I mean, deep dish for the not first to time? I love, man. Cheese, meat. We got fucking mozzarella sticks and cheddar cubes, and the salad was great. And I had an iced tea. I usually just drink water, but I had a couple iced teas. Really living it up. <laughs> so, ah. so we go. <laughs> Just kidding. It was great. I loved it. Shout out to Lou Malnati. Then we went to that pro wrestling tea store with yeah. Dan, and you got some great Macho Man glasses there. Yeah. Macho Madness. What's the store called? Just pro pro wrestling tees. Pro wrestling tees. Oh wait. Oh, is Tony gonna? Whoa. Oh. Can you see through the words madness? Or yep. No. Oh, okay. I always wondered that. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid. <laughs> I was like, how does Macho see through the madness? <laughs> I don't. I don't, all right. Yeah. Uh, those are classic uh, classic sunglasses. Pro Wrestling Tees is an amazing company. Um, they, uh, they got in on the ground level with... Uh, with a lot of great wrestlers and especially the up and coming organization that's competing, that's about to start competing. I mean, it has begun just about a couple weeks ago, but, uh, AEW is a new wrestling organization in this company. Um, like two companies work together. They even have a licensing deal with, uh, with hot topic, things like that. So they provide a lot of the shirts everywhere. Amazing. Um, uh, thing that they have going on i mean they've sold literally hundreds of thousands of these shirts it's like a whole thing where they come out with a new shirt like once a week or something crazy like that and you can make your own shirts pro wrestling tees you did that yeah you did it right there in the store pro wrestling tees.com tony said oh i'm wearing it right You're now wearing one. yeah monday night, oh. night wars monday night wars whoa that's from uh get back left. Monday Night Wars is uh, from back when uh, WCW and WWE were competing. You guys remember that? Yeah. And you'd have to flip the channel. You'd have to hit the flashback button on your remote and go channel to channel because uh, they would WCW would uh, compete directly head to head with Monday Night Raw, and they would time their things to fuck with uh, to fuck with Monday Night Raw. They started earlier, so they'd put Goldberg on at 7:58 knowing that Raw was about to start at 8 p.m. and you didn't Jeez. want to miss Goldberg. I mean, he's undefeated. He might lose. You can't miss that. So the next thing you know, you forgot to hit that and you hit flashback and there's Stone Cold and Vince McMahon arguing about something. Jeez. Yeah, it was crazy. Well, you was, told us a great story about they tried to mess them up with Mankind or something. They knew that he was going to win and they said it. It's one of the all-time great things is because uh, WWE... E at the time was was uh, pre-taped and WCW was live so and they were it really was an all out war even if you're not into pro wrestling it's just an interesting uh, television really entertainment story is like one was live one wasn't and one was the dominant force for two decades and one just started winning week after week after week after week this is when 
WCW had all the money. Ted Turner was writing blank checks to guys. All these people that Vince McMahon made popular were now signing for three times, four or five times as much money to go to WCW and they were dominating. Uh, but Vince McMahon had to use his brain and creativity to, you know, build people up and create new storylines because he was just getting beat. And so they decided to, uh, on one of the pre-taped Raws, they decided to let Mick Foley, who's Mankind, uh, win the WWE Championship belt and, uh, and, um, and uh, so WCW knew about that and they thought they would be sly dogs and announce that on WCW. So at the beginning of WCW, they said, don't worry about our competition. Boring night over there tonight. They really got too cocky. And they go, you don't want to see what's going on over there. I mean, Mick Foley wins the championship belt tonight. So have fun with that, WWE fans. And literally everybody's like, wait, fucking... Mick Foley's a great guy. He's never won the championship before. This is a highlight in his career. And everybody flipped the channel. They saw direct, literally like one to three million people Jeez. change their television at the same time. And they did it to themselves. They flew too close to the sun. Way too cocky. They never were number one again <laughs> after Speaking that. Speaking of way too cocky, Ryan's back here on My Free Cams once again. Oh, wow. In his sleep. Or... Is, are, can we confirm that you're actually awake now, or are you are are, are you sleep camming again, <laughs> Red Man? <laughs> He's literally got full screen. What is that? What is it? What is happening in that video? Also, we don't have good internet out here. <laughs> it's in the middle of nowhere. We could be Re on a on a cliff somewhere, and Brian would pull it up. Yeah. Brian Brian's using it. His hot spot right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Dude. So, um, yeah, what, you were talking about the wrestling tees, and then we went to the game, and the game was Dude, sweet. Dude, the, the White Sox beat the Yankees. It was a blowout. It was super fun. We we almost left. We, there was, it was raining a little bit. We stuck it out. A bunch of people left like idiots, and we oh, stayed. Nice. And then uh, we almost were leaving, and then uh, a fireworks show started happening. <laughs> and uh, we actually walked back down to watch the fireworks show. It was awesome. It was a good time. We also I'm ate not a ice guy cream. who's, like, into fireworks, really. Sure you're not. I saw you tear in your eye. Yeah, dude. Hey, look at these bison here. Turn the camera wow, around. Wow. Those are real-life bison. <laughs> <laughs> Look wow. at those bison, dude. Clearly a bunch of bison. <laughs> Wait, is that just Red Man? <laughs> just Red Man waking up. <laughs> <laughs> is that Andre the Giant? No more baby oil. What are you doing? Also, we were eating ice cream sundaes in the rain <laughs> that night. It was oh, yeah. Kind of cool. Ice cream sundaes in the rain. That sounds like a... That sounds like a love song. Ice cream Sundays in the rain. Ice cream Sundays in the rain. And we went and played 12 games of pool at the corner table of a GQ Billiards in beautiful Chicago, Illinois. Great, great billiards hall. Also, shout out to, if you live near Chicago or in Chicago, Tavern on Rush. If you ever want to go out for a really nice meal, you ever put a little money aside to treat yourself, uh, Tavern on Rush. It's in between all the other... Uh, I guess you could say like more corporate steakhouses. McCormick and Schmitz is right there. Gibson's is across the street. But uh, Tavern on Rush gets it. Tell them Tony sent you. You'll get nothing. Yeah, we got uh, we got some pretty great ribeyes there. And uh, wow, uh, we'll say uh, we eat very well when we are yeah. on the road with you, my friend. Uh, good, 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 good meals. Uh, well, I have you on the record saying that now, so very good. I'm glad. Taco John's. This podcast is actually sponsored by Taco John's. <laughs> da, 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 it is. Do, do, do. It's the delicious fresh sliced jalapenos only available at Taco John's <laughs> or anywhere. <laughs> I would Come on down to Taco John's. Is that their jingle? 
I feel like it, it might have been, but I don't know. It could have been something that was just. It's a luxurious Taco <laughs> Bell. <laughs> Upscale yeah. Taco Bell. Cha cha cha. <laughs> You know, it's it's super American, uh, like Tex-Mex, whenever they added like stuff like cha-cha-cha or CC. <laughs> Dude, that guy last night ay, saying ay, ay. He, he loved Taco Bell and we like roasted him. He goes, what? I love Mexican food. Oh, dude, that was next level. So good. I liked a lot of the, the comics on the, the Madison show. Much better. Yeah, it was fun. Fun people. Uh, yeah, we had a blast. We diagnosed a man as autistic live on the show. He didn't realize that he was autistic, but doctors mentioned that when he was a child, he seemed autistic, and we confirmed it for him. He is autistic. Just saving people's lives, changing lives here. We had that one guy, who, uh, the first guy who in Chicago who luxurious talked about... Taco Bell. Ooh, another luxurious one. Uh, the, that uh, comic we've never had it on the show talk about he had, openly was talking about how he has uh, AIDS in Chicago that comic that was cool that was great yep absolutely I guess that was cool as a, as a weird phrasing but you, you know what I mean yeah I mean he didn't get AIDS on the show you know what I mean like he had AIDS and he came on and he talked about it and uh, so I think it was our first person ever with AIDS on the show so it was like pretty groundbreaking stuff I mean, you know, what's more fun than diversity? You know what I mean? Yeah. It is a testament to how many different types of like, people we have on. We never know what the fuck's going to happen. Um, so that's cool. Oh, my God. How are you doing there, pal? I'm struggling today. I uh, I accidentally roasted a guy. Uh <laughs> Do we want to talk I'm about this? I'm so glad. I, I literally was trying to rack my brain of things that uh, I wanted to bring up on the show. And this is this is one of them. And I was like, what was that one thing? And this is <laughs> it. Um, so Joel accidentally roasted somebody who had cancer. At the meet and greet. Okay. At, at the meet and greet. People come up, they like some, a lot sometimes they like when you say something. Joel to them. sees just like, you know, like a bigger brother or the cool kids, he sees Tony eloquently and elegantly roasting okay. people after the shows. Because Tony's good at it. He like, you know, kinda like chops it up with people. Hey, we'll roast guy. Look at this couple. It's a magician and his lovely assistant like that, you know. Little roast jokes are like Make, people dig it. That they they're usually into it after the show. They're like, oh, I just saw Tony do it to other people. They feel included. Hey, look, it's Bobby Lee's little brother. It's an Asian guy. Come on, what are you gonna do? Oh my God! So it's now usually this sounds. So it's usually pretty light, pretty fluffy. Uh, now, I'm standing to the right of Joel and Tony. That's how we do like the meet and greet lines when we do the posters and we're signing stuff. And uh, I hear a little some rumblings going on. Joel is the first person. That you that you see in line at the meet and greet. It goes Joel, me, Jeremiah, then Red Band, and Joel also an interesting thing that needs to be said gets this weird burst of ADD energy after the show. Like there's this weird thing that happens where he forgets like to get take people's money for the poster. He forgets to sign the poster. Like everything takes an extra literally. 25 seconds per person because of Joel and uh, because he's looking at his phone in between like it's like we're so busy but like he'll be like texting something I'm like what the fuck are you doing he's like oh I'm just responding to this thing now I'm done I'm not doing it anymore it's like uh, okay anyway so he's just super loopy after these shows he's got a lot of misplaced Joelberg energy so now you can go ahead. I'm adrenalized so I would. I think I want you to keep, keep, right, uh, so. keep telling this because I want to hear you and Joel bounce off each other because I'm next to you guys and I'm literally looking at like I'm like what is going on? So there's this guy who comes up to the table and this is what Joel says. The first thing he says is this guy. This guy is completely bald. <laughs> This guy has no eyebrows. By the way, he could have alopecia. I stick by that. We don't. We haven't confirmed that. You stop it. He does not have alopecia. I know, but guys. Clearly, riddled, riddled. 
<laughs> extremely sick. I don't use the word riddled lightly. This is like it was. It was he like had a, muscles. It, it he was, had muscles. It was somebody, upsetting. Somebody called Batman because this guy was the Riddler. Okay, he was riddled with cancer. <laughs> So what is the first words out of Joel Berg's mouth as soon as this nice guy who who just sat through the show and flew right. so, across so, the country? So, so let me tell you this. is The first thing that the guy says is, oh, my God, I'm a huge fan. I paid $600 to come here. I flew in just for this from Buffalo just for this night. I have to fly back tomorrow. I'm like, wow, that's so cool, man. And Joel out of nowhere is like, what does what, what this guy have cancer? No, I said, what was it? Your make a wish? No, that was the se- second. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, thing okay, yes, yes, yes. You're right, you're right, you're right. I remember Joel gotcha. because I was. You're right. I remember shocked. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was dumbfounded. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, he's probably listening to this podcast because he's such a big fan of all of us. So shout out to you, guy with cancer. Thanks for being a good about. sport. <laughs> Well, I, in my def- well, go ahead. You want to finish it, and then I'll defend myself. Yeah, defend yourself. Um, it's just like a nothing bird. It's not a joke at all. Joel's just like uh, trying to like roast and be like, "Hey, hey, chop it up, chop it up, chop it up." Yeah. What, what is this guy have cancer? And I'm like, oh, hey, hey, uh, like it's like, you know, I just sort of like him trying to distract the guy, like, hey, blah, 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 blah. you know what I mean? Yeah, keep it moving. Uh, anyway, oh, so. So and, uh, Tony gives him a a pin. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. So then I'm I literally like like whoa, you know, one of those things to like cover up what Joel just said, and uh, and then the guy's like, yeah, you know, I mean, it's just worth the trip. I had so much fun tonight, and you know, I'm extra I'm extra nice when I see a person is riddled with cancer. <laughs> So like I'm chatting it up with him for a few seconds longer than normal, and Joel out of nowhere goes, "Hey, what is this guy's make a wish?" And I'm literally not laughing at this point. I'm like, Ugh. and to get, and to have Tony like be moving things along, it's bad. Like it's gotten to a bad point when Tony is like being the super professional guy and not roasting and doing anything like that. So now the guy's on to Jeremiah to our right, and I turn to Joel and I go. What are you doing? He's like, what? I'm like, completely oblivious, by the way. Uh, completely oblivious. I'm like, you know that guy has cancer, right? He's like, oh, how do you how do you know? I'm like, oh my god. Tony and I look at each other. Tony's like, like, I have eyes. Yeah, this guy basically is a walking tumor, and. And Joel's like, I had. What is I worse? Had, I, what you're saying right now? <laughs> or you have said just because it wasn't to his face? Oh, a walking tumor. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean. Oh. Uh, you're right. We might have to edit this out of the podcast. <laughs> well, no, okay. So what I was going to say is in my defense. <laughs> Well, wait. No. Okay, okay, wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. There's, there's oh, there is more. There oh, is there's more. one more that Joel kept hold digging on, on. this horrible thing. So, so, literally, it's like, you know, the guy has moved on to Jeremiah, and... I know what's up immediately, by the way. And, and I'm like, Joel, that guy has cancer. Blatantly. And he's like, oh, okay. So he goes... Hey, buddy. And he calls him back. He's like, I'm going to buy you this. uh, I'm going to buy you a poster. So now it's like he's clearly like over the top. It's the only poster that Joel's ever bought. He was about to like buy one or something. And then I like I bought it for him. But I I, I tried to rationalize it that it was because he spent 600 on the flight and stuff. Yeah. I had to give the guy a pin. I gave him a hand job. I mean, I was just doing anything to make up for fucking Joel's mess. Okay. Anyway, shout out to you guy with cancer. Well, thank you for coming out of the show. It's yeah. super, super cool of you. I, I honestly, I don't know what it was. I was just completely oblivious. I used to wait uh, tables, and I used to wait on this guy who did have alopecia, and he had no eyebrows, no hair on his head. Because this guy looked buff. Like, he, he had, like, muscle definition. Who? The, the, the guy. Yes, <laughs> Joel. Were you wearing Funhouse goggles <laughs> or Very something? Very possibly, yeah. Maybe I was. I mean... I always tell people it takes me like two hours till after the show because my brain is just like garbage. Like it, it, it's uh, it's bouncing all over the place and I'm just like really hyper and sort of, yeah, very ADD. Um, 
but anyway, I didn't, I didn't, uh, it's just, it's a crazy story and I didn't mean it maliciously and, uh, but, I, but whatever, but I didn't know, you know, we'll see. Maybe you I don't didn't mean it maliciously. Well, of course you didn't mean it. You're completely oblivious. That was part of the reason why it's so comedic is it's just like, it's so clear to Tony and I that we're just looking at each other like, Joel, what planet are you on right now? How are you? Oh my goodness. Well, uh, shout out to that guy, the walking tumor. He's never going to hear it. Wow. Whoa. Wow. That's what Red Band decides to jump in <laughs> with his with his Midwest sunglasses on. Those are my favorite glasses that you've ever purchased, by the way. Red Band purchased some sunglasses at a truck stop in Nebraska. Is that where it was? All right. Well, perfect. I uh, wish that guy a very long, happy, healthy, fulfilled life. I hope he comes to see Kill Tony numerous times. And uh, Did you say numerous times? Good grief, <laughs> Joel. Can you stop? This is getting really inappropriate, dude. This is ridiculous. Wow. The, guy's, the guy is... You know, the guy could probably... The guy can handle this. He has a really good sense of tumor. <laughs> okay. If he reaches out and he goes, I don't have cancer for some reason, I will never let you guys forget it. Uh, I mean, okay. Yeah, the guy... Th this dude, by the way, dude, this is your bison moment, Joel. <laughs> it's, I swear he didn't have it. <laughs> he did? Pretty sure he did. Can I ask you what you think the odds are of, out of all, you can admit you and I have been around the world together, correct? Around the world. Around, literally around the world together. We've driven all around America together, correct? Correct. And how many times have I said that I saw a bison? in all of America that we've driven across. I mean, that, that, I, I think that, that that argument is not valid okay. because how many times have you said, oh, there's a cow? You, you, you're not vocal about either one. Sure I am. That's not true at all. I always point out fun stuff when we're on the road. <laughs> <laughs> how many times have I said that I saw a bison? Easy question. I mean, I'll, I'll say the same thing. I've never heard you say there is a cow. I've never, I've never heard you say either one. I'll go a step further. Okay, I'm at, but that's not the question that I'm asking you. How many times have I said that I've seen a bison? <laughs> Only once. Right. And what do you think the odds are? And me not knowing where bison exist beforehand prior to that and I go I think I saw a fucking bison <laughs> and so what are the odds out of all the times that I haven't seen a bison that I say that I saw a bison in retrospect I look it up and it turns out bison only exists there we talked about bisons a lot before you saw the bison though Hashtag Bison Gate and Red Band is in the podcast and in this argument, popping up out of his sleep. And it was hundred percent not a bison. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Red Band is in it. He's in the podcast. He woke up out of a sleep chamber. Yes, that guy. The the, wit, the, the witness that that changes the scales of justice back there. I was in the passenger seat of the car. I I wasn't driving, so I got to look at the uh, bison directly. Uh, oh, there you go. Thank and, you. It was uh, a bison. It was a cow. Nope, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's official. No, you have to finish the letting him <laughs> make his statement. <laughs> I looked that bison right in the eyes, and it was a cow. <laughs> so I gotta say, I gotta uh, bring up this thing that we were uh, laughing about earlier in the week because this is something that I was unaware of. A uh, uh, little known fact about me: uh, if I get sent clothing from people, uh, <laughs> I will wear it. Uh, that is something that I, uh, when somebody will send me something from the podcast, I'll wear it at least a couple times. I'll put it on Instagram. I'll sometimes uh, give it to friends or, or family afterwards or, or uh, somebody who's in need of it, whatever. Uh, something in particular happened recently that was pretty interesting. Uh, a guy who, uh, and I think he listens to this podcast. Uh, I, just, I think that this is just funny for me because I was completely unaware uh, there's this guy named Alec Nyston, a uh, very nice guy who uh, has sent me uh, a lot of clothing. Um, uh, he wears a, uh, like he designs track suits and workout clothes. And uh, I've only seen his Instagram. 
we follow each other on there and uh, he's like a fitness model. And uh, so I thought that that's what he did for a living primarily. And he messaged me about um, how he wanted to eventually be on Kill Tony. Um, and he said in the message that he's like, come on, man, I just want to be on the show uh, sometime. Can't a single dad uh, who does porn uh, be on the show sometime? And I was kind of reading it or whatever. I'm just like, wait, what? And then he then he sent me a picture of him and his daughter like on a trampoline playing. He's like, see, I'm a good guy. And then I'm like, okay, like, and it didn't register for a couple of days. And then it kind of hit me. Like I woke up, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> like a cum shot like, to the face. <gasps> I, and I go, wait a second. That guy just kind of just told me that he, like, he's a porn star, like in that message. And I thought he was just like a fitness model. But then he's, I look in the message again and he's like, that, that's his, his side hustle is doing the clothing company and stuff but his main squeeze is actually his penis uh i go to his twitter for the first time ever and it's just him coming on so many things him like in a like a, a recliner like jerking it like just like jizz like flying out of his penis uh and uh in the mean in the meanwhile i have given this brand of clothing with his name on it to not only my wife to wear, I have worn the tracksuit to the gym everywhere. On Kill Tony, we've on worn Kill them. Tony, we've worn them. We were as the Russian break dancers in the Phoenix Stand Up Live episode, uh, and I've given uh, these uh, these tracksuits and clothing to uh, my wife's friends and extended family. These things have circulated <laughs> throughout Los Angeles, and uh, I just. Um, just found it kind of funny that I've been repping uh, my buddy who's a porn star's uh, uh, clothing uh, brand pretty consistently. And let me just say, all three of you have impaired vision. So when we're talking about this bison, you wear glasses. You guys don't take care of your contacts properly when we're on these tours. I had a perfect glasses. vision. I Only the vision that vision. a pilot is allowed to have. Because legally, as a pilot, you cannot wear contacts. And by the way, what you're saying as a joke is absolutely. That's why I'm saying it, because I'm aware I have knowledge of everything. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you guys in your crusty glasses and fucking because God doesn't love you as much as he loves me. He gave me everything, everything I've ever wanted. Yeah. I'm all I be. ever wanted. Yeah. I'm all I ever needed. Yeah. yeah. So do what, what to do, do now. now. Cause yeah. I want me back. <laughs> Very good. Yes. God is a backstreet boy. Good job. I am God. He's coming back. Uh. <laughs> that's no, that's what he said when he, when, boy. He, yeah. when he was resurrected. Back streets, <laughs> back. All right. So, uh, do you guys want any uh, extra tracksuits? <laughs> Shout out How to Nice. What up, they, dog? Dude. Nice in apparel, dog. Yeah. Actually, I'm still going to rep it. I just think it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, from Nystons to Bystons. <laughs> dude, more Bystons over there, dude. <laughs> There's a full field of Bystons, Whoa. dude. <laughs> dude, dude, that Bison's jerking off right now, dude. Uh, <laughs> That bison offered to give you a free tracksuit. <laughs> Tony's gone so far as to be like, next year we're doing the same drive. No, we are. In the sa we are, by the way. We are. And you can laugh it up now, but we're going on a bison yeah. hunt next year, 2020, the year of the bison. <laughs> no <laughs> more bison, bison oil. No more. Looking for sugar, man, but looking for bison. <laughs> and really, that's one thing that I'll say is one, my favorite part. One of my favorite parts, truly, of Friday was just really getting to hang out with Dan Soder. Like, I mean, that fucking guy had me. I mean, I was truly. Ooh, a real Trump bumper sticker. Look at that. That is so cool. Look at that. Wow. You never see that. Oh, camo ball cap. That oh, they better not see me through the window, dude. They also had an abortion uh, bumper sticker, which is contrasting for. Uh, I think for it was an anti abortion sticker. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. You'd be happy to know that I just cut the guy off with the Trump bumper sticker. For all you non-liberals, you'd be happy to know that uh, I think Trump's doing a good job as the president of the United States of America. Uh, anyway, let's keep it moving. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Red Band just threw himself out the window. <laughs> he just went, uh. uh, uh wow. Far left. 
in real life <laughs> and in politics. Oh, man. Oh, and he's, oh, he's back. Really right in the middle it. now, dude. Oh, <laughs> oh Red Band Terminator <laughs> has come back to life, dude. Sure the Germinator. The Germinator. <laughs> <laughs> he's just sh- shooting... <laughs> Shooting Ethernet cable out of his hands <laughs> to, to hook the up T-1000 to T one thousand island. T one thousand. Oh, that's so funny. Na, 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 na. Sweet smell of cotton candy vape. Cotton candy For those vape. Of you that not only like eating desserts, but also smoking them. Hey, I, I want to get into this next segment on the show. It's called Fanning Out. Fanning Out. Questions from fans. Fanning Out. Yeah. Questions from fans. Is that yeah. We, uh, let a fan run to get rid of Red Band's thing in the car? <laughs> <laughs> Is this where we turn on the fans? No? All right. Uh, we're going to get some questions from the internets uh, from some people who wrote in. Um, Basic bitches have to say. Perfect, dude. Oh, people are asking uh, Christian H. Buck on Reddit, is there another challenge coming? Oh, God. Hashtag kill Jeremiah. Hashtag kill Joelberg. Hashtag kill Red Band. Wow. Hashtag kill yourself. Uh, <laughs> keep enjoying the show and take what's fucking given to you. How about that? No, I mean, something might happen. You know, we'll, we'll figure something out. Something fun these challenges you know what I mean like look the whole thing was a joke about how these guys all push each other to the moon it's a, it's supposed to be it's a, a parody of a parody it's not for dumb comedy fans that's for in wrestling called like, they're called smart marks like people that are in the know about everything and I like to think that some smart fans get it what that was was us making fun of Rogan Burt Tom and Ari for pushing each other to the fucking moon as if those guys need more promotional help with their lives and uh, and it was a, basically a gag like I mean it was a weight gain competition you buffoons what are we talking about here no no more challenges just kidding there'll be one, there'll be one in the future we'll figure it out yeah, I thought of we thought about one doing one because uh, uh, Tony said that uh, he's a much better athlete than me. Uh, we thought about doing like uh, like a kill Tony Olympics thing where we do like seven deadly sports uh, and the winner of the the seven sports, you know, blah blah blah. We got to figure out the stakes. At one point, the the stakes, the negotiating, like like got really out of hand though because Tony one of the things that uh, you said at one point was if I lost I'd have to get jerked off by a guy on stage do you remember that that would be hilarious I'm not surprised that I would come up with such a great idea that that sounds hilarious I did I I did I think I do remember pitching that yeah because I told my wife about it she goes Jeremiah are you have you lost your mind like what are you even talking about you realize that that would be our our biggest episode ever though like if like i mean imagine, bigger than screen junkies <laughs> imagine how excited that crowd would be we, i mean what are you talking about we've already done a bunch of crazy shit getting jerked off by a dude isn't even as crazy as getting your asshole waxed live on the air doing both at the same time i think we need to find an american ninja warrior type course and have dude that'd be so fun you guys do it that would be the best with a ninja warrior course. <laughs> there are stuff. people, man. Yeah. People have in the backyard up. and shit. You know, real safe ones. Uh, at Storebot underscore burgers, in the spirit of the roadcast, what's the most illegal or immoral thing you've ever done in a car or while driving a car? Um, uh, that's an interesting one. I remember, uh, I remember driving home one day from high school and uh, I was so outrageously horny for some reason that I jerked off in the car uh, while driving. I can't believe I couldn't like wait because I only lived like seven minutes from the <laughs> school at the time. You completed? Yeah. No, I was like, I had to like get it out of my system. I was an animal back then. 
just fucking hot nuts. <laughs> like, a, like a bison in heat. Anyway. I, uh, going off of that, I, one time I, I have a bad uh, problem with falling asleep at the wheel. Uh, mainly it was when I, when I would, uh, not be sleeping enough when I was working a ton, like in high school and college, we've gotten a little bit better at it over the years. Uh, but when I'm in a car for too long, I tend to fall asleep naturally. And I was driving back from Missouri to Kansas. Uh, and, uh, I was like, uh, visiting, uh, a girl like over the weekend there, like back in the day. And on the way back, uh, I had to go straight to work at the car wash. And I remember like masturbating in the car and blue balling myself the entire two, two and a half hour drive to keep myself awake because the window trick wasn't working. Like where you roll down the window to get fresh air, the radio wasn't working, all that. So I blue balled myself for two and a half hours. It was horrible. How do you see, so wait, what did, how do you blue ball yourself? You literally jerk yourself off until you're about to start coming. And then like you get so like much adrenaline that you, because as soon as you come, you fall asleep immediately and then you, you drive your car into a ditch. <laughs> but like, if you like get to that moment and then you're like, <sighs> and then like you rally yourself up again, it's like a constant ramp up. Wow. wow. Uh, Jesus. Yeah. I was looking for napkins at one point. <laughs> like it got real shady. Dude. You got Taco John napkins. Yeah. Joel, what's the weirdest thing or, or something that almost illegal that you've done in a well, car? Scary. or scary. Allegedly, in high school, I uh, just being with, you know, other with some uh, with thuggy kids that I uh, smoked weed with and stuff in a car. And just, you know, everybody's like drunk and there may or may not be weapons uh, around and stuff like that. And now I look back and I'm like, dude, I'm so lucky we never got pulled over or anything like that. Um, but yeah, just dumb, reckless shit that's like scary if you think I, about it. I used to go drifting with uh, with some what? friends in uh, high school. Yeah. Where? Used like to do that in parking lot? lots and stuff. Yeah. My, uh, I had a buddy who had a, uh, a Honda Supra and dude, this thing would fly. I bet. Oh my goodness. And it was like an old kind of piece of crap car so he didn't care and we would just go we like we almost went into a light pole once i remember very vividly because we were coming around and like it just like we almost like t-boned ourselves into a light pole which is Jeez. really dumb but yeah that's what you do in kansas when there's nothing nothing better to do <laughs> uh do you push mongo that's a that's a question no Okay. Somebody thought I did, but it was just the way I got off my skateboard. Oh. It, Mongo's where you where your back foot is on the board and you push with your front leg. Oh, gotcha. It's like very looked down upon in the skateboard community. Oh, okay. Why? Um, it's just not good control. If your front foot is on the front truck, you can steer better. You can push faster. If your back foot is on, it, it goes up like this. It kind of like, oh. if you push fast, it'll... Pop, 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 pop. And it just looks goofy. It looks dumb as fuck. Red man, what's the what's the worst thing you've done in a car, Joel? Uh, first time doing acid on the way home from Nirvana, and meeting Kurt Cobain. I had sex because I used to have a uh, station wagon with one like a long bucket seat type thing, and she just climbed on top of me during a thunderstorm, and we had sex on the way home. And I always say that I probably died that night because there's like I look back at that and I'm like how the f how did I drive in a thunderstorm on acid my first time and have sex? Like, it, that does not seem possible. So I, th it's like one of those things where I think I might have died that night. And you said you met Kurt Cobain? Yeah. What was that like? Uh, it was when the opening band was on. Kurt Cobain killed himself the next day after me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was when the opening band was on and I was sitting like side stage and I just look over and there's like Kurt Cobain eating Cheetos. Like no one even saw him. And I just like, and then he like, held definitely it. was not Kurt Cobain. It really was. And then, and then, uh, he met he goes, Red Band. And he's like, I'm not happy because today I met Brian. He goes, do you want a Cheeto? 
and and he just or he just put his put the bag out and I grabbed some Cheetos and I put it in my pocket and I was like I'm going to keep these Cheetos, yeah. and then somebody yells Kurt and then he just threw the Cheetos on everybody and then went back uh, backstage again. How long realistically, Red Band, <laughs> did you <laughs> resist from eating Kurt Cobain's No, I actually forgot. Cheetos. And then when I was at the gas station later, I put my hand in my pocket and it was all crunched up Cheetos. I was like, God damn it! I, I was going to save these. Did you keep the bag? No, it was just a, che- a couple Cheetos in my Oh, pocket. he gave you like a handful or whatever? Right. Wow. What's what's have you what's the biggest rock star you say that you've met, Tony? Roger Waters. Unbelievable. Oh yeah. Paid many times to see him in nosebleed seats when I was broke in Ohio, when I was broke in LA. And uh my friend Tall Wilkenfeld uh took me to the concert the great bass player tall wilkenfeld and um we had unbelievable fucking seats like fifth row straight ahead and uh and afterwards uh she was friends with a lot of the members of the band i mean everybody just worships tall and uh roger waters specifically requested her to come over to his own special green room that had like a fucking chocolate fountain and all this crazy shit like the most decked out green room i've ever seen with nobody touching or eating or doing anything just mountains of crazy food and drinks and uh and um we hung out with roger waters it was crazy and uh didn't you uh, didn't you talk to him about the weather yeah it was uh we talked to did we I talk about this on this show i don't know maybe maybe not Anyway, um, yeah, it was an awkward ending because I, uh, I, I felt like I needed to say something because just the two of them were talking for a while, and uh, she's like, "Where are you performing next?" And he's like, "Uh, blah 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 blah," and then Miami, Tampa, and uh, and uh, Daytona Beach, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm like, "Oh," and it was in the middle of summer. It's like middle of June or July. And I had just been there the week before in Florida. And I go, oh, man, yeah, it's really hot there right now. And uh, there was like this awkward three seconds of silence amongst us all. And he goes, "Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to. I got to rest my voice. Lots of shows coming up. That was it. Oh, it was nice to meet you, Mr. Waters. Well, uh, anyway. Tall and I have a tall and I have a running joke about that, about how like, ah. Anytime somebody says something dumb, we go, ah, I have to go rest my voice. Get away. That's code for gotta go. Uh, let's see here. I um, have another question right here. Uh, this is, comes from Stu Kazoo. Uh, this is for Red Band. If there's a video game character that Red Band would like to have sex with, uh, which one would it be? Doesn't have to be female. Can be a male or a bionic character. Ooh la la, space channel number five. Quick draw, Red Band, ready to go. Wow. With it's that. It's like he already knows. Uh, that and the first comic last night, or was it the second one? It's like, if I wanted to do it, you would be my type. Oh, in Madison? Yeah. yeah, that was pretty funny. The that was adorable. That was, that was pretty funny. Uh, at Chris Cali three, um, what are your go to gas station snacks, guys? And uh, what was it like the first time you got to walk into a convenience store and buy whatever you wanted to without worrying about the price? Uh, what was the second part of that question? What was it? Uh, what was it like uh, being able to go into a convenience store and buy whatever you wanted to without worrying about the price? Oh my God. Get a second job, whoever ask this question you need to work harder like going to a convenience store to not worry about the price like it's like what <laughs> jesus christ dude work more hours bro what the fuck are you talking about you should be able to go to a con a convenience <laughs> anyway uh my favorite thing to get at a gas station is people's choice beef jerky uh I thought you were going to say magazine. People's Choice Magazine. It's my favorite thing. There's top 10 looks in this fall of who to follow. The celebrity crushes are out of control. People's Choice Beef Jerky is handcrafted and made in downtown Los Angeles, California. And right now they have the new uh, Nashville Hot 
Uh, it's very good. It actually, uh, Red Band and I had it, and it's uh, pretty spicy. Yeah. You yeah. Go to uh, peoplechoicebeefjerky.com, use the promo code Tony Hot, and get 20% off your first order. Wow. And they're not even the sponsor of this podcast, so there you go. <laughs> Tony Hot, coming in hot at ya. I don't know. Uh, so, Joel, what are your favorite things to get? Because we we go pretty hard in the paint as far as, as snacks and stuff go. Yeah, like that. it depends. If I'm off the rails, uh, water, honey buns, um, fucking, I like beef jerky, uh, cookies, Reese's cups. If I'm if I'm doing all right, I'll get like peanuts, almonds, a banana. I love Red Bull Total Zero. My favorite of the Red Bulls. One of the things that was pretty cool that uh my mom did for tony when uh in kansas uh we we talked to tony's wife and uh got all of tony's favorite things uh since he was gonna be on the road and uh my mom got him uh coca-cola uh key lime pie uh and uh reese's cups and uh well filled out little cards little birthday cards for tony and that was a good time, man. And then wow. I, I made my famous eggs for breakfast. It was amazing. It was such a special time. And <laughs> famous eggs. It just eggs. felt really cozy. And uh, Jeremiah does make fucking unbelievable eggs. He takes his time, cooks them slow. I mean, they are standout good. Like, better than better than in any other scrambled eggs I've ever had. He's done it twice, and uh, he's really fucking good at it. Sort of crazy. Like, they just taste great. Red Ben. You got to try my eggs sometimes. How are they famous? <laughs> well, it's so well, weird when people say things are famous. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> you got to try my famous eggs. Well, your Uncle Billy likes it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like one of your ex-girlfriends. You got to try my famous eggs. They're famous. I, uh, well, they're famous within the, uh, the community. I actually... Um, uh, the community. I, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a there's a chicken community that I uh, subscribe to. Uh, that um, within Kansas, you know, uh, uh, there's actually a young farmers association uh, that I uh, used to be a part of. Uh, that my friend used to be a part of. Chelsea, shout out to you. And uh, I I uh, visited that in um, Lowry, Missouri. Yeah, that happened. So, you know, uh, I'm nationally ranked on the egg making charts. So anytime you want to try my eggs, I'll put my eggs up against yours. What makes them different than <laughs> any, any, uh, any other, I mean, do you just whip it a little longer or do you, do you I, I, I can't really, really divulge all of Come the on, information, but what I, what I will say though, is the, the main issue between making good eggs and bad eggs is that most of the time the main mistake that people make because eggs are so easy and fast to make is they spend the least amount of time prepping and cooking them so by whenever you see people make eggs and they're done in 60 seconds those eggs are not going to be that great so you slow cook eggs. i slow cook eggs yeah and i and i spend my time on them with the like the seasoning and stuff like that and i'm not even that big of an egg guy like it's like I really, I always douse my scrambled eggs in fucking salsa and ketchup or whatever's available, hot sauce, whatever. But his eggs, and only his eggs, I could fucking raw dog it. (laughs) (laughs) Jeremiah, you said, well, I could put my eggs up against yours. Yeah, dude. That's a funny. Can we, uh, what are your favorite snacks in a convenience store, Jeremiah? (sighs) My favorites are Gardetto's, Flaming Hot Cheetos. Uh, I love Sour Patch Kids. Uh, I love Starburst. Ooh, Red Vines. I like Red Vines. Uh, I'm more of a, a pull and peel Twizzlers guy, and I'll fight you. I like them both. Um, I like them both, but I uh, there's something about the pull and peel Twizzlers that I used to roll them up and make little stick figures and balls whenever I used to go to the drive-in. Did you guys ever used to go to the drive-in movie theater? Hell yeah. No, love I've the never drive-in. been. Never. Oh, yeah, because it's, it's probably not that big in L.A. There's a few, but I also didn't have my license till I was... 30 so i didn't get to really so go you didn't have your bisons i didn't have my driver's bisons yeah that's right <laughs> driver's bisons uh, d- uh till you were 30 you didn't join yeah till i was 30 yeah wow so How old are you 32 god damn so you just got a couple years ago is this like a new world for you being able to drive joel yeah it's pretty dope it definitely helped comedy a lot because i could just do you know i used to have to be at the mercy of who i was riding with but then you know you're able to do like three in a night or whatever like because you could just run from spot to spot um 
Dude, how was it? Uh, dude, I'm so happy that uh, the first time you got to do stand up in the main room was at the Reagan Watkins album release dude, party. How was it that, was man? A dream come true. It was great. Literally. I mean, it's like, it's crazy because I'm back there with you guys. It's like my best friends are here. Like, I'm like hugging Pat before I go out. Tony brought me out. And then, like, to have recognition in that room, too, like where, that we do every Monday and like have a bunch of Kill Tony fans and stuff. And. <laughs> took care that i'm there was like awesome and i had a good set i had been bombing all, that whole week like well you, you were you kept texting me how many times you were going to mics and stuff just yeah. prepping for that set so and and you killed dude it was awesome thanks yeah thanks for the opportunity to do that that was great it was cool well i mean let's face it you really just rode the wave of momentum that i built right before you i decimated that fucking audience so you know it must have been easy for you Everybody had really good sets on that. It was a good energy. It was very positive uh, vibes. Uh, so um, Tony was actually riding the wave that was set before him. So uh, it, was, it was a good, fun show. <laughs> uh, Pat and I, <laughs> we brought you out. <laughs> yeah. They, but yeah, so I did. Yeah, I rode the momentum. But some people can't do that. They'll stop it. Or I, I actually started like with a joke kind of riffing off the, like, the last thing that you had said. So it did definitely keep it keep everything moving um but i've heard that too like some people are scared to follow some which of course i am but they're scared to follow someone who's like killing but that you can actually it can help you can go up and just keep keep that energy going like yeah so i don't know i felt it that night it was great um did we get red band's favorite snacks yet no not yet vape juice <laughs> <laughs> tropicana vape juice Powerade Zero, orange or grape, gummy bears, uh, or any kind of gummy worm or whatever. And uh, I'm a Dorito guy. I like oh, Doritos. I do love Doritos. Uh, all of them. They're all good. You like Cool Ranch? Sure. Oh, it's my least favorite. You know what? You know what's really good is uh, Doritos and Chuck's mix. Oh, really? Yeah. Don't, some, don't they make uh, some of those mix sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Those are kind of hard to find for yeah. whatever reason, though. I think they used to. Like Maybe the they, sun chips and stuff yeah. like that mixed together? What are those called? Yeah, those are good. Uh, we'll do one more question. It's and, a really crazy terrain out here. That's another thing. Like, it's kind of, It's very green. Not too many farms. Well, it's been yeah, it's been raining a lot out here too. So it's it, it all. I always forget how green everywhere else is outside of LA. Passing over railroad tracks right now, dude. Uh this comes from Jib Comedy. Who's everyone's favorite guest of the past? Some cities or costume ideas you haven't gotten to do but would like to. Um, and uh, just to ruffle a feather to who would do the best minute for the show that's on the show. Well, Joel's actually done a minute on the show. I think he's the only one who's actually done a minute because if you look way back, Joel did a minute before he uh, was on the band. Yeah. I've done, I think, three minutes. Yeah. One before I was there, one when I was there, and then one, I think, when Russell Peters was hosting. Uh, favorite cities or past guests? That's a common question, but people always want uh, to hear us talk about it. You want to stop by McDonald's to get Egg McMuffin? Really? Let's go to fucking Cracker Barrel, dude. Are you being serious? Is that a Taco John's? Oh my goodness. Yes, it is. Yay, CCC. Yum, yum, yum. Back up to Taco John's. Uh, Joel, people are asking, so they're asking uh, what are the, the costume ideas that we haven't gotten to, but we would like to do. Um, that we haven't gotten to. Yeah. I don't know. People always send great. Like, I pretty much like them all other than a lot of people will suggest things. And then I'm like, you don't know how hard this would be for us to well, like do what's interesting is we get a lot of suggestions of things that we have already done yeah uh we well i get constant messages where people are like, you should do this and if if we've already done it i i'm 
may not respond to it because it's just like we like there are all the episodes are killtony.tv where they're laid out with the characters and the descriptions of the episodes that we've done and it's one of those things where it's like you can check it out what <laughs> tony's laughing thinking about how silly joel looks with that blonde wig on like what a weird contrast it is with blonde hair on a mexican you always skin. say that yeah a blonde it's, mexican it's so funny to me I, it's just such a it's like a unicorn or something <laughs> blonde mexican it just looks weird the contrast christina aguilera dude you look like a uh, like a create a player like in a video game uh i don't know if christina aguilera is mexican yeah, I don't. Uh, I think she's. Uh, I don't think Aguilera. Then conmigo, there were th- then <laughs> conmigo, baby. There were two uh, white Mexicans last night that were uh, at the show. They l- just looked like regular Wisconsin people, and they were like, "We're Mexican." And you're like, "How do you do this? Yeah. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> Must be nice." Louis C.K. You would never think he's Mexican or Tom Segura. Tom is uh, what Argentinian or something. Uh, like Slovakian or something, hmm. Polish, but yeah, but he's uh, one of his parents. I think they're from Argentina. Oh. Let's see, he did that show, I think, where they did a set in Spanish, right? Was Segura on that at the improv? Anyway, really? Yeah, I think they did a show where a couple comics did sets in Spanish. I think Segura was on it. Wow, I think he speaks like pretty fluent Spanish. That's pretty cool. I can't believe that. Well, we uh, let's get into uh, one of the final segments of this show. Uh, I want to briefly talk about, because uh, we, we said we were going to talk about it the last time. Uh, let's get into the kindness challenge very quickly. Uh, Red Band did something very nice. Uh, uh, if, if you remember in the, the last Roadcast episode, he got me a Squatty Potty, guys. And uh, I have not talked about it on uh, the show that much. Uh, really been enjoying it red band can i say that uh everything's been um it i actually miss it when i don't have it on the yeah, road that's what i'm saying <laughs> but you could use a you, usually you can use the trash can in the, the bathroom oh just put it sideways <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's pretty good you guys know this? I bought a guy with cancer a Kill Tony poster the other day. Oh my goodness! <laughs> what? It's the kindest challenge. Anyway, bye. you're a mean person. Wow, uh, I love it when Red. One of my favorite things is when Red Band does his fake serious voice to Joel because Joel clearly has anxiety, <laughs> and Red Band, <laughs> Red Band will be like, Joel, Joel, you need to knock it off. Okay? It's very mean. You need to stop it. What kind of a person does that? And then Joel, for whatever reason, takes the bait literally every single time. <laughs> and Red Man is dying laughing at Joel just like crumbling on the inside. Oh, I love my friends. <laughs> I don't do that. Don't look at me and go, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? What's going on? And I go, I don't know. Uh, Joel, uh, we did, uh, uh, that, uh, we did a little shoot over at your place and, uh, your parents are always super nice, uh, and they made, uh, made food for everybody when we were over there. That was very, uh, tacos. Oh, yeah. Tostadas. Tostadas this time. Chicken. Oh my tostadas. goodness. And it was the first time that your dad saw Jolina. Yeah. Up close in person. What was that like, dude? It's interesting. He saw, he's seen photos and stuff like that. Uh, but it was definitely a trip to come out of the bathroom dressed as a woman with my cousins all there. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it was, I don't know. That was, it was like, uh, it was like the Lawrence moment with my dad. I think overall he's, he's like too proud of me to not, to like have it make him feel any like weird way, but I'm sure it's weird seeing his son dressed as a woman. Nah, he knows I'm not dude. Too many chicks, I, dude. Yeah, dude. I live with my parents, and I fuck. <laughs> dude. Um, Have you ever taken a, a, a girl? <laughs> no, I wasn't going to ask Joel if I've ever taken a dick before. <laughs> Have you ever taken a girl home uh, with you, like, while they were asleep, and you're, like, trying to, like, 
get to your room without like the wood floor creaking. No, they're cool, man. They just let me in. <laughs> they're fine. They're they're like you know, I don't know. We're all kind of like equal. I don't know for like. Um, no, I don't have to sneak around or anything. Okay, I guess that yeah. was my question. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I like you know help him with the house payment and stuff. I think yeah, you can bring no, you're, you're paying, paying rent and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Yeah, I definitely need to. Uh, I'm trying to think of something that I did on uh, on the road this week uh, that would qualify as a kindness challenge, and I think I need to up my game a little bit because off off the top. I mean, Tony knocked it out of the ballpark, literally bought us hats like we were little kids, like we were on an outing with Papa. Tickets. Uncle Tony. Hooked up that first flight. Wanted to make sure everybody, uh, you know, had a little something to remember a day off in Chicago. Remember this leg of the tour to a White Sox-Yankees game. It was fun. Have that, you know, tickets just not enough sometimes. But yeah, I'm really proud of I'm really proud of myself for getting us on that first flight out of uh, the layover in. uh, uh, Where were we? I think it was. Oh, it was Minneapolis. That was the first one. Yeah. And yeah, I. uh, Long story short, I had to really use all my travel experience and fucking. All my. Magical customer service uh smile and tricks to uh get us on an earlier flight because our later flight was delayed and the earlier flight was leaving in like 20 minutes and uh had to hustle get us on it saved us hours and hours and hours of dog shit sitting at an airport doing nothing you know if you ever see if you have a layover or any or really if you're at an airport and you have a ticket and you see that there's another flight leaving and your flight's delayed, you could just go and ask if you could get on that flight and they usually don't give a fuck. They'll just let you on if there's seats available. So little inside information from Mr. Tony Hinchcliffe. I mean, I really, I have a lot of crazy travel tips and secrets. And if you, if you travel as much as, Myself or or more more so Tony, he's got a lot of a uh, lot of things, uh, little hacks. Um, one of my hacks is uh, is uh, bringing an empty water bottle through security so you can fill it up with water as uh, you go on the other side, so you don't have to pay for a five or six dollar bottle of water on the other side. Yeah, I mean that's one way to do it. Uh, that's I I guess that's a that's a. A peasant's delight. It's a working class uh, move, and uh, it's a it's a way for you to be able to spend more money on uh, maybe things like uh, gas station snacks that you uh, need to have room for in your wallet. Yeah, or, or a magnet for your mom. It's true. Joel and I get we try to get magnets for our moms in the different cities that we go to. We haven't gotten any of this. I know it's been we hard. we didn't stop by any places the entire time. Uh-huh. So it's a little, right. little bit more difficult. <laughs> Brian goes, dude, just Amazon all 50 state <laughs> magnets in one swoop and slowly give them to your moms. Brilliant. But they're all, they would all be the same style. Like if you did that. Anywho. Also, it's heartless. <laughs> yeah, there's not like like anything attached to it. All right, let's, let's get to this final segment of the podcast. It's Sax Talk. Oh, Sax. All right, we are back with Sax Talk, and our buddy Joel Jimenez has volunteered to share a story that he may not have divulged on one of the last roadcasts. Sure, I volunteered. They put a gun to my head. I'm kidding. No, I'm joking. Yeah. I, uh, the thing is, it's not funny. It's more just a story of a good, fun time. <laughs> I already, you know, an honest I, night. I, I already <laughs> love it, by the way. <laughs> just an honest Day and, and night. Day and night. Here we go. Um. So I don't remember when it. Uh. Yes. I. Oh God. I should know this. Um. I took uh this nice lady to Disneyland for her birthday. 
Um, I know. All right, here we go. It's not... Okay, all right. I'm sorry. I don't have any uh, putting massage oil that burns somebody's ass <laughs> stories. But, uh, but uh, So last time I didn't share this, but I'll say it because I got to clarify a few things. I had said last time that there were two condoms involved. I think everybody thought, you guys thought that I put them on at the same time. But what I meant was we had sex twice. So, you know, we got we had a great day at Disneyland. So much fun. I mean, who does not love the happiest place on earth? Uh, no lines. Everything. We got on all the fucking rides. All the good ones. Had churros. Fucking chicken strips. French all of that great night so uh then we leave i had gotten a uh hotel in anaheim uh that night so that we didn't have to drive back uh, uh so after disneyland we went to this uh pizza place what is happening tony is hating hearing a sax inside of a car gotcha so loud so it, no it makes no sense to break up a story with it but go Anyway, uh, so after di- so after a great day at Disneyland, uh, we uh, we uh, <laughs> we, we go to this <laughs> we go to this place called Pizza Press in Anaheim, which I think that so that we, we go to this place called Pizza Press that I uh, okay. All right, <laughs> we're trapped in a chamber, <laughs> flying 90 miles an hour through the road. And good thing I'm the pilot. Continue, Joel. Uh, so we go to this place called uh, Pizza Press, which I think Jeremiah will like. It's like a place you go and they press, you, you know, you pick your toppings and they put it on the pizza. Then you get to eat that pizza. And then we also got beers and we sat down there at the Pizza Press place. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so we had uh, we had some beers and some pizza and then uh, slow down make it sexier dude oh while I was doing what Tony said comedically so you wouldn't play the saxophone um, no we just had a night you know we had some pizza beer and, and then uh, on our way to the hotel I was like let's stop off and get some champagne and so I bought a bottle of champagne to take back to the hotel room <laughs> so you got so, so you got champagne back in the hotel room. What yeah, happened? Got some champagne. Went back to the hotel room, um, showered, uh, and then uh, you know on the bed uh, start start the hanky panky, dude. And then just fucking get it on, dude. It, and it was just a great end to a, a good day. Uh, and then afterwards, we just uh, watched Ridiculousness. Uh, went to bed. Uh, and the next morning, as we were we were all you know cleaning up the hotel room, getting ready to get out of there, about 15 minutes away from checkout, I uh, looked at her and I was like, "Are you thinking what I'm thinking?" And then it happened again. And then we went for coffee, uh, and we had enchiladas for lunch, and uh, that was it. Just a good, honest meal. was a beautiful sax talk with Joel Jimenez and uh, if you're not watching the video of Tony Hinchcliffe's facial reactions to that <laughs> you're really doing yourself a disservice he's having an aneurysm <laughs> because, because it, it might be the unhappiest I've seen him uh, in a, quite a while it was uh, pretty entertaining I'd rather be in a card with Bernard from the Astor <laughs> Hotel right now or an actual bison yeah Red Band, do you have anything uh, to say before we end this thing? A hard no from Sunglasses McGee in the back. <laughs> Joel, anything? Uh, no, this is tight. You know, that, Tony did make a good point, though. Like, it is weird that you're trying to talk and then there's a saxophone going on at the same time. It makes it, it's hard to talk. It's, 
high register too. It's like it's a soprano sax. It's a travel sax. It's always like the same thing. Like it's like okay, we get it. I mean. If you want me to play different kind of scales and stuff, I mean, I can. Whoa. Oh, boy. Uh, no, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, like, it's sort of like... A- I mean, I'm not going to give any notes on your show, but, I mean, I am giving notes on your show right now, so I don't really know what to say other than I don't like it, and I don't know why you should continue to do it, because I don't think, I mean, as a producer, and I am a producer, producer's guild pending... I think that you should scrap sax talk. I know it's one of your things is, you know, the band leader of the, the best name in the land on the Kill Tony, the number one live podcast in the world. But I also think that eh, maybe it's not the best fit. I don't know. Wow. You do such a good impression of me, Jeremiah. It's one of your best. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh my god. Red Man is really literally you. bleeding out for McDonald's. Honestly, for honestly, I just wanted to drink. And I, have nothing to drink I do need. Something to drink. All right, Joel, do you have anything before we end? Um, mostly no. sorry on social media. Yeah, mostly sorry Check on out. Instagram, on Twitter. Um, if there's anyone out there who can help me get uh, Joel Berg as a handle, uh, reach out to me. Oh, that'd be cool. I need that. Somebody, Somebody has any- it. They tweeted. They did one Instagram post like three years ago. And I tried reaching out to them. They didn't get back to me. But I know there's other ways. Tony, anything? Oh, look at that bison. Wow. Wow. I mean. That's no. a large bison. I would, but I'm holding my sax from Saxton. That's a cow. That's a cow. It's just a big cow. <laughs> well, guys, uh, Tony, do you want anything? Yeah. Uh, do you plug Kill Tony dates on this show? Because you should. I do, absolutely. I right. always do in the intro yeah. of the podcast. Philadelphia is a big one, July 25th. Uh, still some tickets left for the second added show at the Gramercy Theater next week. Huge Kill Tony at the Gramercy. Two shows. And, um, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, plug July. July stuff. So we'll be in Texas in July. And uh, we'll be uh, also coming up is Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. Those are some big dates. And then uh, we've got uh, uh, so Fort Worth. Um, Fort Worth Kill Tony has literally already sold out. We barely announced wow. it. And it's already sold out just off of their um, just off of their own. Their email blast or whatever. Yeah. Uh, however, we have just added. You'll be excited to know we added one more show on that Wednesday. I believe it's July 10th or something like that. But uh, our first ever Kill Tony at the Hyenas in Plano, Texas. It's a big, uh, big venue. And um, so, yeah, come on out to Plano. Join us, Texas. You know the deal. Kill Tony live, Texas, one of our favorite places and states to go. We go there three, four five times a year. So here we go. Here we go. We're back in Texas in July. Uh, and then... Um yeah, uh, if you haven't yet, um, thank you to anybody who has been downloading the Reagan Watkins album or has uh, purchased hard copies. Uh, vinyl uh, will be available. Thank you guys so much for listening to Jeremiah Wonders' uh, Roadcast with the Kill Tony crew. Uh, much love to everybody listening or watching. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks. Bye, guys. Go, 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 go. On the day I was born,